Welcome to the last talk of the day. The last speaker of the day is uh, Shomendu Mukherjee from ISI Kolkata. He'll speak on a mean field model of uh, academic collaboration. Shomendu. Thank you. Uh, so uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, inviting me and uh, it's my second time here at uh, ICTS and good to be back. So this is going to be a talk about academic collaboration. And so our goal is to model or come up with a statistical model that could explain uh, various observed metrics of academic collaboration. All right, so uh, since I'm going to be talking about collaborations, uh, let me, Let me uh, first name my collaborators. So Shishendu is at CUNY and Amojit is a graduate student at ISI Kolkata. Okay, so academic collaboration uh, has been on the rise. Uh, so here is a picture from Mark Newman's 20, 2001 paper. It's a snapshot of, uh, um, it's a snapshot. So. Uh, on the first, so the, the first picture is of interest here. Um, here we are plotting the uh, frequency of number of collaborators. Um, and you can see that in these disciplines, astrophysics, condensed matter physics, high energy physics, and computer science, there are lots of papers which have lots of people in it. I think it's on a logarithmic scale or, uh, so this is a frequency, yeah, so the frequency. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, there are like experimental papers, like right? there are uh, big groups and there are more than 400 or 500 papers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes like the author list covers like two pages. Okay, so one and a half. <laughs> yeah, okay, so here's another picture. Uh, so here, so this picture is taken from Porter and Ruffles. I'll be referring to this paper again and again. So the first picture plus the mean number of authors per paper and ac across time, basically. In each decade, you have a data point. And these are different uh, subjects. Biotechnology, I think electrical engineering, this, these are self-explanatory. Uh, physics, I think uh, molecular, atomic, and chemical. That's what AMC stands for. Uh, but yeah, so the mean number of uh, authors per paper has been increasing. And slowly the mathematicians are also catching up, as you can see. And then, then here you have uh, the percentage of single authored uh, papers, okay? Because all these uh, six disciplines. And again here, as you can see, uh, uh, decreasing behavior. Okay. 
so how do you people, so, okay. So, so this was a snapshot of this distribution. Uh, so in order to understand the dynamics, we could look at a um, time series of histograms, but it would be more convenient to look at one number summaries like mean number of authors, et cetera. So people have come up with various indices of collaboration for that purpose. Uh, so let me describe to you a few of uh, these indices. So let's say you have a body of literature and FK is the frequency of K authors, K author papers in that in, in that body of literature, and PK is the uh, the, the the fraction. Okay, uh, so this was defined in the 1980s by Lawani. Uh, it's called collaboration index. Essentially, is the mean number of uh, mean number of authors in a paper in, in that field. Okay, um, uh, the, the next one is. Uh, from this paper by Subramaniam uh, called degree of collaboration. So remember PK is the fraction of K author papers in your corpus. Uh, so P1 is the fraction of single authored papers. So they're just looking at uh, the fraction of multi-author papers. Okay, that's the degree of uh, collaboration. Uh, okay, so these are quite easy to understand. And in fact, we are plotting uh, essentially these two uh, indices here as a, as a function of time. Uh, there is something more interesting uh, called uh, the collaborative coefficient. So let me quickly try to explain this to you. So let's say each paper has, a, I mean, if you write a paper, you get a reward of $1. And that reward is shared equally by the uh, co-authors, okay? So if you write a K author paper, then uh, each author receives a credit of one over K dollars, okay? Okay, so what is this? One minus this collaborative coefficient is basically the average credit that you receive for writing a single paper, okay? So of course, the more the average credit, that means uh, you're, you're, you're mostly writing single author papers, so the less the extent of uh, collaboration. So this is a normalized coefficient. It's between always between zero and one, and it is zero if and only if you only have single authored papers, okay? Yeah. It's K, what's the chance that it has K authors, right? You have a pool of literature. Okay, so let's uh, look at, so, so all these pictures were, uh, you know, ancient essentially from 2009. So let us look at some more recent uh, pictures that we drew. Uh, so these are all from, so I'll show you uh, the, the, the plots of these, all these three coefficients in three disciplines. Um, uh, from the from archive uh, uh, data, okay. So this is for co computer science, and so the first one is going to be the collaborative index, the mean number of authors. This is the collaboration coefficient. This is the one where you, yeah, you, you get some credit, and that's the average credit, one minus the average credit, and this is the this is one minus the fraction of. Uh, uh, fraction of single authored papers. And you can see that uh, all of these three show an increasing trend. So this data is up to 2020, but archive fortunately makes available all its metadata about all, all its papers. So we can, we can, uh, we, we can, we can re redo it till probably December. Uh, but anyway, so, so this top panel shows it for all authors, that means you, um, you, you, you so, so you consider all the, all the, all the active individual in a discipline and so on. And for fun, these are, uh, these, these three are for the top 100 authors, okay? So top 100 most productive authors in a discipline. So this is for uh, computer science. Uh, let's look at physics. You again see that uh, there's a increasing trend. In fact, it's almost like a linear trend. 
I don't know what's going on here for top authors in 2000. So there are some physicists here in the audience. Maybe they can tell me what's going on at 2000. There, there is apparent dip in the... In, in... Sorry? Uh, could be archive came uh, online in, in the 1990s and uh, I don't know, maybe 2000, I, I'm not sure. I mean, if it's well earning 1991 or 1992, I would explain it, but I don't know how to explain this. Okay. Um, yeah, and similarly, we have a picture for mathematicians. And you see, till uh, 2005, we're not really uh, collaborating according to this uh, overall picture, but then things sort of took off. Okay, so, uh, so here in this talk, my goal would be to come up with some simple statistical model using which we'll be able to explain uh, some of these pictures that you're seeing. Okay. Any, any questions so far? All right. Yeah, so what do I, how do I make a model? Okay, so this is the first thing that I want to somehow build into my model. So it is natural to presume that past collaboration history uh, affects uh, your, your present uh, collaboration decisions, right? So you want to sort of build in uh, this fact into our model. And uh, we want to build a model so that we will be able to, as, as I said, we will be able to uh, explain the observed behavior of uh, some of these indices that I showed you. Okay. So here's a very simple model. So it would, it's going to be a mean field model. So let's say you, there are L plus one authors in your system. I'll uh, index them as A0 to AL. So A0 would be a fixed and designated author. And we'll assume that A0 writes papers at the event times of a Poisson point process with uh, intensity function lambda t. Okay, so some inhomogeneous Poisson process. And we'll refer to this as the paper writing process. So at this time points, A0 basically writes a paper. Okay. And uh, this script Cn, so this will denote the set of co-authors of A0 for her nth paper, okay? Okay, so, so for simplicity, sometimes I will denote the authors also by 0, 1, 2, L. So I'm, here I'm, I'm using notation and saying that Cn is a subset of 1, 2, L. Okay, so that's my notation. Now let's uh, introduce the model. Okay, so remember that we have a inhomogeneous Poisson process and at the event times, A0 considers whether to write, A0 writes a paper. And let's say you are at time n plus one, A0 is considering who to include uh, as a co-author in the n plus one th paper. Okay, so I want to sort of build in the collaboration history uh, in, in this decision-making process. Okay. So given C1 to Cn, so C, Ci, remember, is the uh, set of co-authors in the ith paper, right? So given C1 to Cn, suppose that author Aj or author J has written M, N, J many papers with Az. Okay. So, so given the... Uh, past in papers of A0, I just count how many times A0 has collaborated with uh, author AJ. Okay, that's my MNJ. And then at time EN plus one, uh, AJ is included as a co-author with some probability which depends on this number, MN, MNJ, okay? So this FN plus one is some arbitrary function. I'm not specifying it. so. Uh, the way we'll think of it is some function that we'll estimate from data, okay? So this is the model. So given 
C1 to Cn, you have this indicator saying whether J is included in the n plus one th paper or not. And that's a Bernoulli random variable, whose mean is Fn plus one of n. And we also assume that uh, these are conditionally independent. So whether you include person one or person two, those decisions are conditionally independent given the uh, past history, okay? Uh, okay, so any questions? So here's a pictorial representation. This is the designator uh, author A0, and these are the potential collaborators, and this is the n plus one at paper writing event. And the, these are the lucky individuals who got picked. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's my model, and uh, of course, depending on Fn plus one, how the function looks, we can uh, incorporate various types of behavior. Maybe you have written lots of papers with someone and then you are tired. You don't want to write uh, any more papers with that individual. So this Fn plus one can be decreasing after a, uh, after a threshold, right? After K, maybe it's very small. Right? But at the outset, maybe you are very enthusiastic and you can, uh, you know, the, so, the, so there is an early movers advantage. Like, uh, so in this audience, I think I have only collaborated with Siva. So he has an early movers advantage and yeah. Okay, so the observables that you are, you are going to be interested in are these numbers, XKT, XKST. So this is the number of K author papers written by A0 uh, during this interval S to T. And uh, yeah, so you can very easily express uh, these uh, numbers in terms of uh, the event times of the set like this. So remember the CN is the set of co-authors in, uh, in the nth paper, okay? So as, uh, as uh, the paper writing event itself is a Poisson point process, inhomogeneous Poisson process, so if you sum these numbers up, you just get the uh, Poisson process. And uh, yeah, so that's your, uh, th that's your Poisson process there. Uh, okay, so uh, some results. So this model shows some non-trivial correlations. Uh, so let's see. So, uh, so I want to see the instantaneous behavior of this, uh, this process, xk plus one uh, t, T plus H. So the number of uh, K author, uh, or K plus one authored papers, or rather K authored papers actually, because yeah, because you are now, I mean, I'm, I'm also including the, including A0 in the count. Uh, in this interval, what is the behavior of that? Okay, the first order behavior is like lambda T times the, uh, the, the marginal distribution of the number of co-authors in the next paper, okay? So N0T, remember, is the paper writing process again. So I, I, I want to look at how many K, author, K plus one authored papers you are writing in this interval T to T plus H. So HKT is basically the marginal distribution of the number of co-authors or number of authors in the next paper that you're going to write. So this, uh, the first order behavior is like this. It's proportional to this um, uh, this uh, Poisson process rate lambda t and the proportionality constant is this uh, this marginal distribution. Uh, this is the behavior of the covariance of the count of k plus one or rather k of k plus one authored papers and k prime plus one authored papers. And uh, this is in general non-zero. So what is g t k k prime g t uh, g t k k prime is a joint distribution of the uh, of these two indicators that the, 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 the that in the next uh, paper you have k co-authors versus you have k prime co-authors. Okay, so in the it going to zero limit is given by this expression, and, and therefore you have in general you have non-trivial uh, correlations, which is. Uh, so what about, uh, yeah, so let's compare this with a null model where uh, we don't really include the past collaboration history in our model. 
Okay. So because of in, including this collaboration history, what happens is that the co-author set CNs are temporally de dependent. Okay. So let's let's assume that uh, these these probabilities do not depend on k, right? In, in my model, the dependence only came through these numbers, m and, m and j's, right? So if this function doesn't depend on k, then I am not really including the collaboration history in the model. And therefore, these random sets cn, they're independent. And in, in fact, uh, if you assume that it doesn't also depend on n, so it's just like a constant. I mean, at, at each paper writing event, you just uh, include everyone at random with some probability p in, in your paper, then there is no correlation whatsoever. Okay, so the, the so this is zero. Okay. It goes to zero, the correlation between these, uh, the, 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 these two indicators, uh, these two counts is exactly zero. So this is what happens in a null model. And a main feature, uh, main feature of this model is that uh, we have non-trivial correlations. Okay, so uh, so ideally, so I have proposed a model. So ideally, what I would like to do is to estimate the parameters involved. Okay, so uh, what? Uh, so we have basically two parameters. So one is the intensity function of the uh, Poisson point process lambda t, and the other one is the these probabilities f and k's, right? These functions f and k's. Uh, so the paper writing process NT is of course observable. You can just count uh, all the papers of, us, of individuals. So therefore lambda T is, is just like estimating the intensity functional of a Poisson process. So you can use standard techniques like a kernel density estimate to, uh, to estimate uh, lambda T. Uh, what about the other parameters, which are these, uh, these probabilities F and Ks? Um, okay, so, so here I'll crucially use the fact that um, given C1 to Cn, the decision to include individual, uh, individuals in your paper, they're in the in independent indicator variables. So you have a conditional independent structure. So basically it's a conditionally on C1 to Cn, it's a product of uh, Bernoulli's, right? Two different possible means. So therefore, you can very easily uh, write down the maximum likelihood estimate of this, uh, the fn plus one k, which exists whenever the uh, denominator is non-zero. Okay, so this is a completely non-parametric estimate of the the, 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 the functions fn k. Okay, so uh, so let me uh, state some results about uh, the estimators. Uh, okay. So, uh, so for this, I will need, uh, need to consider the distribution of these counts. So remember MNJ was the number of times author J had collaborated with author zero. So for fixed N, these MNJs are all IID uh, variables. So, so these, uh, the distribution of in particular one of them, let's say MN1, would be very important. So they, that, that parameter, so this P and K is the probability that M N one is K. That means uh, author one has written K uh, papers with author zero in past. So these numbers will show up uh, in your asymptotic uh, distributions. So here we can quickly write down a recursion for these P and Ks. So P one zero is of course uh, that you have not written anything. So yeah, so it's one minus F one zero. And then you have a very nice recurrence for P and K. So what is P and K? P and K is the probability that you have written K papers in past. So let us throw in a condition that, uh, so here by past I mean in the previous N paper writing events. So let us throw in a condition that, uh, throw in uh, these two extra uh, conditions. So uh, in the past N minus one, in the first N minus one papers, uh, uh, one has collaborated exactly k times. So then that means that in the nth event, they haven't collaborated with uh, uh, author zero. And there is only on another alternative. Uh, in the first n minus one uh, paper writing events, one has collaborated k minus one times. And in the nth event, they have again collaborated with uh, author zero. So th that makes mn one k. 
right? So if you just, uh, yeah, so, the, so that gives you that the, this indicator uh, um, uh, CN1 is zero and here it is one. So you can do a very quick conditional probability calculation, which gives you a, a nice uh, recursion between these P and K and P and minus one K. So uh, yeah, so now let's take a mean field uh, limit. So la let's say, imagine the author pool is very large. So I'm going to do a large gel asymptotics. So if you send del to infinity, then this Fn case, these non parametric MLEs, they are consistent estimators of the true uh, parameters Fnk. And you also have a CLT. And the asymptotic variance of uh, the variance here depends on FNK and these, uh, these, 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 these parameters that I just introduced, okay? So you can do, um, yeah, so, you, so you, you have an asymptotic uh, distribution and using this, you can, for instance, draw confidence bands around these FNKs. Uh, okay, uh, so, so far my model has been completely non-parametric. FNK didn't have any structure in them. But uh, so we have found that uh, this empiric, this parametric submodel is already quite powerful in explaining some of the features uh, that I uh, showed you earlier. So this is a very simple empiric, uh, very simple parametric submodel. I'm assuming that FNK is linear. So AN and BNs are unknown parameters that you have to estimate. So of course, FNK is supported uh, on zero to N minus one and these are probabilities. So you have some restrictions on, uh, on, on both BN and AN. So we'd like to estimate this AN and BN from observed data again. Um, so in this case, yeah, again, you can write down the conditional likelihood um, of the parameters A and BN given the past collaboration history. And that's a very simple uh, yeah, uh, formula. And you want to maximize this with respect to AN and BN to obtain the estimators. Uh, so these are the estimators that you get. Remarkably, what it turns out that these are the same as the uh, least squares estimators of AN and BN, pretending that we had a linear model like this, that uh, indicator C and I, uh, uh, you are regressing that on MN minus one I. If you had this linear model and you did a, a least squares estimator, then you will exactly come up with these estimators, okay? And provided, of course, that these denominators do not vanish. And in the large L asymptotics, we can show that with high probability, these estimators are well-defined. So these denominators do not vanish, okay? Uh, so this is a uh, parametric estimation of uh, these, uh, these model parameters. And again, we can, we can prove uh, uh, consistency of these parameters and uh, also asymptotic normality. These parameters, these, these asymptotic variances are uh, quite complicated expressions. So, uh, so I'm just omitting, omitting this. Okay, any, any questions? Sorry? Oh, okay, so the crucial thing is that you have a conditional independent structure and I am taking a large gel asymptotics. So it's just like, uh, you know, usual, usual business. You have L many things, L is going to infinity and things are conditionally independent. L doesn't grow with N. L is the total number of authors. So that is going to be large in your pool of papers. Uh, so this is just large, L asymptotics, N is fixed. So typically what would happen is that, you know, uh, most people have written probably 100 papers at, at most. So N is like uh, finite essentially. N is the uh, index of the paper, right? It's, it's the nth paper I'm talking about, okay? So we'll think of uh, L as large and N is fixed. Okay. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm, I'm saying that this is a mean field asymptotics. Uh, you're allowed to collaborate with everyone, so N is large. Okay, so uh, now I'll come to, uh, uh, joint convergence, yes, for fixed, uh, if you take, let's say one to N, N fixed, yeah, N fixed, and uh, then you have a joint 
joint convergence as well. Yeah. I'm not sure if uh, you can prove uh, um, you know, some kind of distributional convergence if you let N2 grow with L slowly, but yeah, probably. Yes. It depends. Again, uh, it's a very general model, right? Like you have a completely unspecified non parametric function Fn. So, depending on what you put there, you can get both negative correlations as well as positive correlations. Okay, so now uh, I'll move on to uh, defining some dynamic variants of the indices of collaborations that I showed you earlier. Uh, yeah, so I'll just have the same thing. I, so remember previously you had these PKs. PK was the proportion of K author uh, papers in the corpus. So I'll just zoom in on a temporal window ST and count how many papers are there in total and how many K author papers are there in total. So this XK over N is the uh, proxy for PK now, okay? And then I define all these indices as a, as a just, just like before. And these are functions of these uh, terms. Oh, by the way, so these, uh, we notice that uh, all of these have the following form. Essentially you have a non-decreasing function uh, phi from N to R, and you are just taking expectation with respect to this frequency distribution. So you can uh, generalize it and uh, define a generalized index of collaboration. And for these three indices, PK is given by uh, these three functions. Okay, okay so let's uh, look at the behavior of this generalized index of collaboration under our model. Uh, so the expectation you can quickly compute and uh, this is, so there is a part involving the Poisson process and there is a part involving the uh, co-author set. So the, the Poisson process part you can easily compute, uh, but uh, so this uh, is not easy to compute in general, at least uh, coming up with explicit expressions. But uh, for that parametric, uh, so for certain cases, we can actually come up with explicit solutions for this, uh, for this, uh, ex this, this, this quantity. So in particular, if you look at this uh, collaborative index, which is the mean number of authors in, in your paper. So for that, phi is linear, k minus one. And let's also assume that these fns are linear. So I'm, I'm referring back to the parametric submodel that I uh, talked about earlier. In this case, you can quickly uh, show that this expectation, the expected number of co-authors in the nth paper, that actually satisfies this very nice uh, recurrence. Okay. Depends on all the previous count, but yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, you can actually solve this recurrence, but anyway. So let's not uh, stare at that, but let's look at uh, uh, the behavior of at least two things. One is the mean number of authors in the nth paper. And the second is uh, a plot of this Fn case as a function of n. So remember this Fn case in this parametric submodels are linear functions as a function of k, okay? Fn k is a n k plus b n. But here I'm plotting Fn k as a function of n, okay? So I'm fixing k. So how many, you know, single author papers, two author papers and so on, and seeing uh, and uh, how, how does this, so this is like the propensity with, with which you are including a person in your co-author set, uh, given that uh, they had collaborated earlier with you in N number of papers. So this is how uh, the, uh, these, uh, uh, these plots look like. So I'll show you the corresponding empirical analogs. It turns out the, these remarkably uh, match the empirical behavior that we see from, from the archive data. So here, uh, uh, yeah, so as I said, FNK is ANK plus BN, and uh, I've chosen two particular values of AN and BN, and L, the author pool size is just 100.
okay, behavior of the indices. Again, we can uh, look at first order asymptotic behaviors and turns out that it's proportional to the rate function of your Poisson process. And uh, it also depends on the, again, the number of, number of co-authors in your next paper, okay? So let's say, let's look at that uh, simple example, uh, the, the null case where the CNs were all independent. So I, I was including everyone with probability P, irrespective of, irrespective of our past collaboration history. In that case, of course, um, uh, the, these numbers, they don't depend on N. They, they, these sets are IID random variables. And therefore you can quickly compute that in that case, the, uh, the expected uh, index of co collaboration, this doesn't depend on time whatsoever. So it's a constant, right? And that's of course not what we see, uh, not what we saw in those pictures. We had some uh, non-trivial behaviors. So of course, that indicates that uh, such a naive uh, null model is false. Okay. Here are some simulations which show uh, uh, the behavior of these indices. Uh, depending on different choices of these parameters. So one is the, uh, the, 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 the rate functional lambda t and the, 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 the f and k, the, uh, the, the probabilities, right? So again, we have L, L equals 100 authors and I'm plotting these three indices. As you can, as we just discussed that uh, if, 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 your, uh, if, your, if your probabilities don't depend on n on, you know, n on k, then the CN, uh, the author says they are independent and, uh, and the, 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 the indices are constant across, constant over time. And that is what exactly what you see here. Uh, so let's look at something uh, like a linear function. So this is, a, this is where uh, FNK is a linear function and lambda t is constant. And now you can see, uh, 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 nonlinear behavior, in fact, growth. Uh, here is another situation where this FNK depends on N, but not on K. So this is another situation where uh, the, the author sets are independent, but they are not IID. Uh, that situation still also shows up in the indices in that the indices are not constant over time but they have some nonlinear nature. Mostly the nonlinear non nature is coming from the uh, process. What are the gray dots? The gray dots are uh, basically confidence bands. Uh, so one standard deviation confidence. Okay. Given this model. Given this model. Of... Yeah, so I'll show you the, so I, uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think we have uh, these plots here, but qualitatively this model explains what we saw in the archive uh, picture that you have linear or uh, this type of uh, uh, concave behavior for the authors. Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so I will now show you some more pictures. So again, for the archive data, so here I am plotting the number of papers, um, uh, the, the number of co-authors, the mean number of co-authors. Uh, so this is a plot of empirical correlations between, uh, I think, uh, X1 and XK. So remember X1 is the, number of uh, two authored papers or a number of single authored papers and XK is the number of K authored papers. So this, this is a correlation between these two counts and empirically you can see, you can, you can both have uh, you know, positive correlations as well as negative correlations. Okay. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I have, I think, yeah, four, uh, four, for four values of K, I have these uh, correlations plotted here. And uh, the, the rightmost plot, uh, so this is the plot of uh, the FNKs as a function of N. 
And um, for, for each value of k in 0, 1, 2, 3, I have a, I have a plot here. And I have some similar plots for uh, physics as well as uh, mathematics. And the, and the takeaway is that uh, in, in, in all three disciplines, we have you know, growth in the mean number of co-authors per paper. There seems to be non-trivial correlations between these x1 and x, you know, the x, xk and xk prime. And uh, if hnk's have this, uh, this behavior, so if, you, if I go back to, so keep this picture in mind and uh, let's go back to the, uh, the picture that we got for the parametric submodel. This, uh, although it's a very simple model, it still qualitatively captures uh, the behaviors of these FNKs. Okay, I think I'm almost close to uh, finish. Maybe I'm finishing a bit too early, but yeah. So here are uh, some potential for uh, potential directions. So uh, yeah, the first one is a sinister one. Maybe uh, you look into your, your co potential co-author citation indices and then um, based on what you see, you want to make a decision. I don't know whether people do that, but uh, we could try to bring that into your model. Uh, more importantly, we would like to uh, model, uh, you know, network interaction. So here, uh, it was a mean field model, so I allowed everyone to collaborate with everyone. But uh, what happens if I have a, a underlying uh, network, which will regulate these interactions? Okay. And the third thing I'd like to uh, do is. Uh, incorporating interdisciplinary collaboration. So, so here is another picture from this paper by Porter and Ruffles. So here uh, they are plotting the number of subject categories uh, that a paper, number of different subject categories, of course, uh, from the, the parent one uh, that a paper is citing across this discipline. And as, 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 again, as, as a function of time, and again, you see a, a rising trend, which sort of signifies that there is more and more interdisciplinary uh, collaboration. Uh, yeah, again, uh, mathematicians are uh, catching up like a turtle, but yeah. Uh, uh, so here is another, uh, you know, uh, uh, picture from that, uh, from the same paper by Porter and Ruffles. So this is a map of science and uh, uh, each uh, node here is a sub-discipline of, you know, some discipline. And uh, there is an edge between two, uh, two, two nodes if there are lots of citations uh, from one, uh, one, one field to another and so on. So we'd like to uh, build this type of, uh, uh, interaction between different disciplines into our model. So uh, you see that uh, these parameters that we have FNKs, uh, they're, they're not really homogeneous. So in our modeling of the archive data on computer science, there are lots of sub-disciplines in computer science. So there is no reason to assume that across all of these sub-disciplines, these, uh, these parameters are homogeneous. So we'd like to sort of, uh, you know, do some kind of a, built in some kind of a, uh, block-wise in homogeneity uh, in our model. Uh, yeah, so that's it, I think. So these are some of the references, and this is uh, this is the paper, and uh, this, uh, this is our paper, and this is on archive uh, since September. I find it an interesting conclusion that uh, uh, scientific collaborations become more interdisciplinary, but I, I find it difficult to rank the high impact journals there. So uh, papers in nature, how do you classify their primary topic? 
primary topic yeah that's a that's a that's a good one yeah uh, and, and often these are may, maybe based on how yeah. many you know you look at the set of authors and uh, yeah maybe the funding author what is the what is their discipline the lead author what is their discipline and based on that you can do a, a rough classification i guess it's it's Some people have multiple uh, multiple yeah, yeah, yeah. affiliations right yeah definitely yeah, yeah. But it does explain why mathematics comes out relatively low. Yeah. If mathematicians are involved in a multidisciplinary collaboration, <laughs> they tend not to be the leading author. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's a good observation. <laughs> uh, for, for what? Uh, like this? These ones? Yeah, I mean, this I'm not so sure. Uh, I, 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 I don't know of a explanation why it is uh, patterning like this. But uh, I know that, uh, if it doesn't depend on K, probably uh, if N is going large, you are seeing the same effect as this, like the coefficients are becoming more like a constant. Right. Yeah. So not one dollar. What, what is the what is the? I don't want to give you the Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So you have to do it at a journal level. Okay. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Which institute is this? I am. I am okay. Yeah, that's more or less we did that because under other assumptions we weren't able to do anything. But yeah, it's not very uh, uh, realistic, of course, because there are network effects, of, of course, right? Like there are three people you are collaborating with this guy, this guy, and they have collaborated in the past. So probably these two decisions are correlated with each other. So yeah, we're trying to build a hypergraph based model, something like a configuration model, but on hypergraphs, because you can think of these uh, papers as hyper edges, like K author papers are essentially in hyper edging hypergraphs. So uh, this type of uh, interaction. But yeah, that's a simplifying assumption, which is not probably um, true in real life, but yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.